Okay, so today in this video, we're going to be talking about the PlayStation 1 we got right here. We've got our original DualShock controller. We've got our slim version of the PlayStation 1. Let's go ahead and power her up. Let's boot that bad boy up. Little LED light is on. Nice. But what do we got here? We got our PlayStation Pi image booting up in a Sony PlayStation. Unbelievable. So I just wanted to show this real quick, actually. I um, got this, this, this image, you know, designed for use in a PlayStation, essentially. Let me turn this down. But here's the real deal. So I wanted to go ahead and, and, and modify a PS1 system and house a Raspberry Pi 3 in here with the new uh, PlayStation Pi image. Um, so as you can see, we're using original DualShock controllers. They are plugged into the system. Um, we do have... I don't know what the original color was in the LED light, but I added a blue LED. Um, and as you saw, the power button does function. <clears throat> so with the power button, I did use the original power switch that was on the the uh, the board, the PlayStation PCB board, whatever. You know, I desoldered it, removed it, wired it up, and that's what I'm utilizing in the case attached to the Raspberry Pi 3. And then I do have an LED attached to the GPIO, and just some extra LEDs. I have like, you know, white light, red and blue and green. I've got a bunch of LEDs that I've used for numerous things. So I just decided to put a blue one in there. Like I said, I don't remember what color the system originally had as the LED, but I thought blue was fine. If it's dark, you could really see it. It, it, it lights up quite a bit, but you can still see it. it's a little blue LED. Um, so with that said, you know, not perfect, but I think it came out pretty well, in my opinion. Um, I'm probably going to work on another one, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. So I'll go ahead and pop, pop, pop that bad boy open. So we have a, a little fan just chilling here. It's just blowing air on the CPU. Um, works out pretty well. I did kind of cut out some of the CD. Uh, tray area. I'm probably going to trim out more um, and just have a little more room to work if I want to kind of mess with stuff, but everything's fairly accessible. I do have an HDMI extender. That way I can just plug in the HDMI, you know, that way. And, you know, you see numerous wires, wires for the, the power, the power button and the LED. Um, and that's pretty much it, you know. It wasn't overly complex putting this thing together. You did have to snip out all the, the little extra pieces, you know, plastic that are in there. Little little nibs and bits and whatnot. <clears throat> um, so that was pretty simple. And then, uh, you know, just unscrewing the case just uses normal, normal Phillips head screws. Um, so that's very simple to remove and open this case. You know, the open original PS1. I believe there's six screws. Yeah, I think there's six screws and you just gotta remove them. There's one that's covered by a, uh, like a warranty void label underneath on the back side. So you either just cut out the little hole or you just pull the sticker off, whatever, remove the screw and then just pull everything out. And then start snipping all the little extra tabs that are in there, making sure you're not snipping the tabs or the, the little you know spots for the screws anyway but pretty much you're gonna have to snip out most of the little tabs that are in there to fit everything in there snugly. So everybody, everything's pretty much sitting in here. It's not gonna move at all. I don't, I just have the fan just kind of chilling, but you know, this is a 40 millimeter fan. This is a little bigger than your standard fans that you would use for a pie, but it sits in there nicely and it pushes air fairly, you know, nicely, a lot better than, than you know, the real tiny little, little fans that are out there. Um, so this guy, you know, it's keeping it cool. I do have heat sinks on there. Um, what else? You know, I'm, I'm using, I've gone through 
several different adapters to use PS1 controllers on the system, and I wasn't having too much luck. I do have one, you know one other one that I bought just on the whim that works, but not for this modification. Um, the ones that I have, I will link in the description if you do want to get them. Um, but overall, it's a very easy build to do if you want to modify one of these cases. You can find these, you know, PS1s all over the place for fairly cheap. Um, I think I bought a couple of them for under 20 bucks. I got one on, on you know, Craigslist meetup for $15, and then I got another one on eBay for $20. The one that was $20 actually came with a, a controller and a couple games, so that was kind of a, a good little deal. Don't really care about the games or, or anything. I don't even care if the system works. I just wanted to gut everything. Um, but I did have one PlayStation of my own that didn't work, so that's, that's ultimately, you know, the best bet. If you already have one that doesn't work or you're just not using it, just gut that bad boy. Um, but to just go over real quick what you would need to do this. It, nothing major. I used hot glue, so I had a hot glue gun. Um, some little snippers, you know, little, little guys to, to snip the tabs off and to kind of shape some of, you know, the cut out, you know, certain pieces. A Phillips head screwdriver. Um, a soldering iron, if you want to remove the power switch off of the, the PlayStation board. Um, that part's optional, not 100%. You can still get a power switch in there, but if you want one that just fits nicely with the button and just depresses perfectly, you might want to use the one that's already on there and just desolder it off. And you can get a, a soldering iron, a real cheap one that will do the job for, you know, five to 10 bucks or so. I'll, I'll link one off of Amazon as well if you want to take a look. So yeah, you'll need that hot glue gun. And that, the hot glue gun, what I used that for was to keep the adapters in place and to also mount the uh, switch. Because there's a, the, the, the power switch is a little square switch. Um, so what I did was, you know, I had to wire it up obviously, but there's a little depression in the case underneath here. Uh, it's a little square and the, the, the switch will sit on that. But once you remove the board and everything, the switch, it's not gonna sit on it by itself. It's just gonna fall over, especially if you, ha you, you have to wire it up. So you have to have the wires down. So what I did was I just, you know, a little glob of hot glue right there, you know, put that bad boy on there, you know, made sure it was, was nice and centered, um, and then just kind of reinforced it a little bit. And that, that was it with the power switch. Um, so the hot glue was just, I used it to mount the power switch and I used it to mount the adapters to keep them in place. So you could pull, you know, if you unplug your controllers, you can pull them in and out without worrying about anything falling loose or whatever. So the hot glue works out well for that. So hot glue there, hot glue there, hot glue on the other side for the controller. And I'm pretty sure that's all I use the hot glue for. So that's essentially it. The soldering iron, optional. Hot glue gun, optional. You could obviously come up with other you know, ways to do that, but the hot glue just works well. You can get a hot glue gun if you don't already have one for between five to ten bucks, just like soldering iron. You know, just basic stuff to get the job done. Um, but I'm digging it. I'm really, I'm really digging it. You know, you don't have to do the LED button. You don't even have to do the power switch. But I just wanted it to be as nice and authentic as possible. Um, so that that's that pretty much wraps her up. You don't have to use a fan if you don't want. I just had this extra fan that I bought, and this one's actually a USB powered fan. So I have that plugged into the USB over here. Um, you know, it's not so cramped, but you know, I have several wires on the GPIO for the LED and the power switch. So, you know, using the USB fan kind of, kind of works out in this sense because there's room for it and it is a bigger fan. Um, and it pushes, you know, the strength of the push of the air is pretty good. Um, you know, so I don't have any real ventilation on this. Underneath, there's a little bit, you know, the, in the you know, on the, the actual case, there's some slits, which works out. But I figured, you know, have the, having the fan, you know, face down on the CPU will, would, uh, would work out, I guess. But I think that's pretty much it. I like the case. You know, I'm happy with, with you know, the job that was done with this. Pro I might do another one or two. 
anybody's interested, I definitely could do a, a tutorial, you know, step by step. But it's pretty simple. Once you have one, you open it up, you'll be like, yeah, this piece of cake, I can get this, this bad boy going. This image is already set up for the power switch anyway. So if you're using the PlayStation, you know, the PlayStation Pi image, the power switch, you know, as long as you, you, you wire it correctly, which is not hard to do, you're, you know, you can press your button to turn it on and off works just fine so this image already has that in place um, to get the 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 light working it, it's you know it's simple simple wiring as well um, so pretty much that's it I'm happy with it happy with you know using these original controllers having it look like a real system um, you know I got some help as far as you know finding the adapters or finding adapters that work from you know simply Austin also you know had done this project and and kind of gave me a heads up on where to find the adapters because he had gone through a bunch of different variations of them i did the same thing you know started just buying different adapters and none of them would work until you know he gave me his his uh recommendation and i found one that appeared to be similar or the same as the ones he used so i bought them and they worked so boom got that bad boy going so I'll link all that if you guys are interested. If you want to see a, like a hands-on tutorial of actually building this, let me know. We'll go ahead and do that. But I will catch y'all next time.